For anyone who hasn't watched Haikyuu, spoiler alert! Hi, we are Intermesso. I'm Luca. And I'm Hannah. So today, continuing our so called antagonist character from sports anime series, we're doing an anime called Haikyuu, which focuses on volleyball. Our chosen character today is Oikawa Toru. From Aoba Josai team, which is sometimes referred to as Seijo in the manga and the anime. So, Oikawa Toru is a setter. He is a third year and is the captain of Aoba Josai. And he has the number one, which is usually an indication of the captain in volleyball. His outlook is that he has dark brown hair and he's portrayed as. An attractive person who has the height of 184 centimeters. And a highlight for him is he has a cool serve and is really, really good at setting. My first impression on Oikawa Toru is that he wasn't first, first six in the practice match. Is it practice match? Yeah, it was practice match. He wasn't starting. Yeah, he wasn't yeah, a yeah, starting yeah. six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. Yeah. But then he was subbed in. To the team just for one surf, mm -hmm. and then that one surf like completely blown Kalasano's mind. Wow, a surf can be that powerful. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I think Oikawa was his knees are hurt or something, or ankle, ankle? is hurt. yeah, ankle, ankle is hurt from another like match. But then he could still give out such power, and that game highlighted the competition between Tobio and. Oikawa and their sort of like a little hint on their relationship in the past when they were in the same middle school. I think when they got the invitation for a practice match against Seijo, I think one of the regulations was that, was that regulation or something? Seijo asked that they would only do the practice match if Kageyama Tobio was the setter mm. for Karasuno. And I remember at that time that the Karasuno team was like, wait, what? And I think that was somehow something perhaps the Seijo team or even Oikawa requested specifically because they would like to see how Kagema is doing after he left them at Kitagawa, their old yeah, yeah, yeah. their old school. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit of contrast to Tobio, like Oikawa is a more bright character. <laughs> and he's always joking around, like I'm not saying that he's not a serious person, but then normally not when he's not in a game, he's somehow like to tease people around mm -hmm. but then at the same time he's a really charismatic person girls fall for him <laughs> and <laughs> so you can see like girls cheering for Oikawa during the match and stuff like that and then there comes Iwaizumi saying hey please focus on the game and <laughs> stuff like that despite Oikawa really puts a lot of effort into being a setter and I think one big difference from Tobio is that which makes Orikawa a really like he really shines mm -hmm. is that he's really good at team play mm -hmm. and I don't know why like when we watch Seijo play the team is so much stronger with Orikawa in in the court and I think this is um, the relationship between Tobio and Oikawa makes the whole story um, more interesting as they somehow try to draw a path for Tobio's growth with sort of like the support from Oikawa being the opponent. <laughs> Oikawa does that reluctantly, I believe. <laughs> I do know that Ushijima from Shiratori Zawa, he did say that Oikawa is the best setter in the prefecture. And one of the ongoing gags between them is that you should have come to Shiratorizawa, <laughs> which is one thing that Ushijima has. He has a high respect for Oikawa, and he does say that Oikawa brings out the best in whichever team he plays for. That sort of poses a contrast to Kageyama, who is really talented, a genius considered, but it's like, at the start, Kageyama is such a control freak. Like, he makes people do stuff, which gains him, like, the nickname of King. And on the other hand, Oikawa, I think he realizes that he might not be as talented as Kageyama. He is frustrated over it, and it somehow hurts him to admit that. And I believe that when there was a flashback, as he got, like, an award as the best setter of the prefecture, he was crying because he doesn't like it. He feels like he isn't the best, and he agonizes over it. But and then at the same time, he does take another route. He 
believes in his teammates and I remember that before a match he looks back at his team and while he was smiling his face suddenly fell and was like I believe in you guys and at that moment you could feel like the team the spirit of the team just flared at that very moment and I believe that that's what sets him apart as a setter that he is really team oriented like what you said and he does have a great understanding of his team like, I remember when they were playing, um, they were practicing across the court, and you could hear Orkala saying, oh, you're in a good shape, or do I have to set it higher for you, and all that. And it's like he is perceptive of his team's current situation, and he's also perceptive of his teammates' needs and how they play, and that's what makes him stand out. Different to other setters from other teams, say, for example, um, Kozume in Nekoma, mm-hmm. and I mean... Kozuma is sort of like portrayed as a really brainy setter, mm-hmm. but different to Oikawa, like Oikawa is also a clever setter, but mm-hmm. then his play style is not like that. He's putting most of his trust in his teammates, so I can't remember which match it is, but then in the end, like he, Oikawa has a choice to still set the ball up for either Iwaizumi or someone else, but then mm-hmm. in the end he trusted Iwaizumi, mm-hmm. and then although I think they lose them, I think they lost that match. But then, yeah, he has a really strong bond with his team. Mm. Well, I think it's particularly that he has a strong bond with Iwaizumi, as in the background, they grew up together, and they basically they played with each other for so long, and they have been partners ever since. And I believe that the two of them know the best for each other, and even though they have a love-hate relationship between them, and that's what strengthens their bond. And I think that even though like they're bickering all the time, the two of them hold a high respect for each other and that they also would stick together if they could. And yeah, that's like a special relationship, especially between Iwai, Dumi and also Oikawa. I think one other standout point is that although being a setter, Oikawa has a really good surf. Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't expect such surf from a setter. Mm-hmm. And I think even Kalasuno um, did take some time to in order to catch that serve, mm. and it was a really strong impact on Kalasuno when they first played with Oikawa. And I think again, this is um, one of the standpoint of being an sort of like antagonist of a sports team. Like they have someone in the opponent's team that they have a stronger ability mm-hmm. that they have a high respect of from pe- from other people it makes the sort of like the main characters sort of more well they have to be really try their really best in order to beat them and so this sort of um, set the step up for the main characters to grow that mm-hmm. they aim for revenge of winning them back mm-hmm. and so it makes the sports anime gives it more chemical yeah. and for things to go i also think that the manga well, also the anime, it particularly highlighted the relationship between Oikawa and also Kageyama. Because when you see when Karashuno was playing against Jira Torizawa, you could see Iwaizumi and Oikawa sitting there. And Iwaizumi commented that um, your disciple, which he referenced Kageyama as, your student, mm-hmm. is doing well. And Oikawa was like, I taught him nothing. But like you could see that while Oikawa didn't really teach Tobio hand by hand, Kageyama had learned a lot from Oikawa, and especially from the serve that he does. He spins the ball the same way as Oikawa does, and that really speaks a lot about how highly Kageyama regards Oikawa. And even when Kageyama has troubles in setting, he goes and rushes to Oikawa and like stops him midway and was like, please help me, like I need help. And Oikawa's like, what the? Oh, <laughs> well, Oikawa is petty. He is petty in the sense that he was like, no, I'm not gonna help you, like, shoo, (laughs) not my business. But I also think that, in a way, he also regards himself as a senpai, so he does help out Kageyama in a way, although it was, like, just a comment. Yeah, it was really indirect. (laughs) Yeah, but he still does it, and yeah, despite his pettiness, you could say, well, that's sort of, like, a characteristic of his that makes him stand out. He's, like, so polarized. He's got this, like, no, don't want to, and, like, you know, that pettiness against people. And then he also has that really charismatic and, like, lovable, strong leader side to him. And, yeah, so that's what made him lovable as a character. Okay, so this is the episode on Oikato Toru. 
despite being the antagonist, mm-hmm. but then he's a really respectable opponent that mm-hmm. he earns other people's respect, and because he's always looking out for the team, and he does everything for the team. Mm-hmm. I think he's a self-made talent. And it's really special that he has such a close knit relationship with the entirety of his team. Even Kyokin Chan, who doesn't really fit in with the team, but he also listens to Oikawa and Iwaizumi also. And yeah, he's a formidable opponent, and he's quite all rounded with powerful serves, really great sets, good insight, and also dedication and love for volleyball as a sport, as well as his position. So this is the episode. On Oikawa Toru, we hope you enjoyed it. This is Intermezzo. Bye. Bye.